Wednesday, and it's time for the Contrarians Live Chat. The topic tonight, makeup on covers, but not by Kiss. Step one. All right, let's get started. Let's get this rolling. Holy crap, there we are. Hey, Jamie's here. Uh, Todd is here. Martin's here. And of course, Peter Kerr is here. We are live, and it's the Contrarians live chat, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, well, you already know what the topic is. So we are talking, uh, well, we're talking album cover covers again, but we're talking about makeup on album covers. And we only have one Kiss album cover to discuss. Yeah. Now, I want to, there you go. Um, we do have a comment already that I want to address. Um, okay. Now, if I can find it. D Rocker says, good evening, all. Let's kick this off with David Lee Roth, Eat Him and Smile. You know what, D Rocker? Great minds think alike. Because because of this, I'm going to go first. Nice. And we're going to go David Lee Roth, Eat Him and Smile. All right. I mean, you're talking makeup. Yeah. There you go. Very cool. Very so cool. there you go. That's my first one. And by the way, since I jumped the gun, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go three, three, and two. Right? Yeah, that sounds three, right. Three and, three and four. Three. Four. Wait a minute. How many are we do in ten? You ten, think ten, I ten, would nine. learn? Yeah. yeah. It's only been eight months. God, I, I swear I'll get out the calculator. I know. Well, you know. David Lee Roth's got a good back cover too, which is kind of cool. And skyscraper's cool because that one I think is shot in uh, up up around Whistler Way, Vancouver Way, right? Because he was a yeah. big mountain yeah. climber dude. So that's a pretty cool. One. But I don't think he's got any makeup on. No, uh, the, this one's got a really the, the the back cover of this album should have been used for the front cover. Yeah, right? I could have done and a that. glazed donut to go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. So anyway, the, so we're doing three, three, and four. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I know what we're doing. All right. So my next one, I'm gonna go with the Misfits. Walk Among Us, 1981. I know it's very small, but most of the people in the chat they know the Misfits and what they look like. Very gothy, very monstery. You know. But this fits the whole context of the makeup thing. Hey, they damn near have as much makeup on as David Lee Roth does. My number three, and I've brought this up because I love this record, and I think this is one of the greatest parts of Erg, a music war, and that's Klaus Nomi oh, yeah. and his work. I Phenomenal. Yeah. Love Klaus. Those There's, videos on YouTube are just, yeah, you could just watch them over and over again. They're just so, so cool. I have just, you, have you, you've seen the video with Klaus backing up David Bowie. He's yeah. like one of the background singers. Yeah. How great. But yeah. uh, Klaus, rest in peace. He's been gone a long time, but yeah. oh, highly recommend. If you want to listen to something bizarre, check out some Klaus. I'm just going to yeah. leave it at that. So anyway, I went, I'm going to go, let's do this. I'm going to go Jamie next. Peter next, Martin, and then Todd, and then me, and then I'll just keep looping around the way I see it. All right. All right. Jamie Laszlo, what's your uh, first three? Grant, as you were talking, I just ordered a new camera because do you see the lines going on on my camera? It's mm -hmm. very annoying to me. I don't see the lines see because you're lines? so small. Right. I was a little late. I was trying to fix it. Oh. Okay. Are you saying that new, yeah. that new laptop has a crappy camera? I see them great. I'll cancel my order. Yeah. Um, my very <laughs> first one I'm going to go with is, uh, of course. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if I said the story before. Maybe. Um, this was the first time I ever saw Pat Benatar. First time I ever saw her face. And being a 12-year-old uh, or whatever I was, I thought she was like Kiss. I thought she went to the supermarket, <laughs> supermarket looking like this. <laughs> so I remember being at a uh, salon when my mom was getting her hair cut. And I was looking through the magazines while I was waiting for her. And I saw a picture of Pat Benatar in there, of course, looking normal. And I was like, oh, I felt like I was looking at Kiss without their makeup on. I was like, oh, that's what she looks like. Like, mom, mom look uh -oh. at Pat Benatar without her makeup on. And I didn't realize that. It was just for the album covers. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, my next one is uh, Motley Crue, Shot the Devil. Probably the only Motley Crue album I like all the way through. Um, you can go with that one. Yes, I forgot that the, the, that's like an alternative cover. But on the back, is that I remember the back cover? Oh, is that back the back cover. cover? Is that the cover yeah. on the CD? This is on the CD. This is the back of the booklet on the CD. 
Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. But I remember all us kids going, ah, oh, they're just trying to be Kiss with a little less makeup. Yeah. Motley Crue. Well, so we've had Misfits and Crew that are, are a little bit almost derivative of Kiss in a way, right? A subtle version of Kiss. Right. Yeah. 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 And if you're There'll going be to more. dress up, if you're going to dress up as David Bowie for Halloween, what would be the first thing you'd do? You'd put this on your face. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. A lot insane. 1973. Yeah. yeah. And that mullet has not aged well, you know. I mean, I. I well, the mullet has come back, Martin. A lot of my neighbor kids have them. So yeah, you go to the big, Marion. Big Australia mullet. Mullet. Yeah, big in Australia. Just go it to just, the Marion County Fair here in Ohio. Plenty yes. of them up there. Not that it aged well, but. It kind of aged well. It's just Bowie. Bowie is seen as this, uh, you know, uh, fashion visionary. And I remember going to the David Bowie is thing and looking around a lot of that stuff. A lot of that, you know, all these glam guys look terrible in the seventies, but but <laughs> Bowie, Bowie didn't escape it either. Bowie was no fashion plate in the uh, 72, 73 period, was he? Well, he looked good well, in that dress. That. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> all right. Uh, Martin, do we want to look at some comments? Or we want, what do you want? Sure, to absolutely. How are we looking? Let's see. Gary Joyce is here. Logan Collins is here. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, uh, Adam and the Ants is mentioned. Peter Gabriel. We have more on that later, and Adam later. Angel on Earth. I almost went with that one. We've got Arthur Brown, first transitive for makeup. Yeah, he's very early for that. Absolutely Im important. Um, let's see. Uh, Eric Dins is here. Uh, Ken White. Um, yeah, West Borland of Limp Bisky. Yeah, there's there's classic douche rock there. Um, <laughs> New York Dolls, more on that later. But uh, all right, let's turn all it right. over. Who's next? Uh, it's uh, Peter. Okay. Right. So Australia got uh, hit by the glam bug in the 70s with a band called Skyhooks. So this was the big um, album called Living in the 70s. And just to give you an understanding of how glammy they were, if you can see that photo total weirdness so full-on yeah. glam the album i'm putting up is when they lost their lead singer shirley strawn and they went to another lead singer and went kind of new wave in 1980 and it's hot for the orient so mm -hmm. this album cover's got nothing to do with the songs um it's kind of like a geisha girl um it's a little bit bland but i thought for the purposes of having full-on makeup for this show this is the um, you know album cover I'm putting up. I actually like the album cover much better than any of the songs on this album. And there's the band. It's kind of uh, middle of the road, new wave. That's a, that's a bit of a subtle doppelganger cover to uh, Steely Dan Asia a little bit, mm -hmm. eh? Yeah, you're right. That's what I was love. Saying. The album cover, not so much the album. So that's hot for the Orient Skyhooks. Uh, Split ends, New Zealand. They started off quirky weird they were very avant-garde this is the yeah. phil judd years and um yeah i've got to put split ends for the album um, makeup they're just full-on makeup it's very pantomime yeah. and um as they went deeper into their career the makeup got paired back and they were kind of like a full-on sort of new wave uh power pop etc cetera, etc cetera. so and, um, and that's uh pre Neil Finn, right? That's a fairly early split Tim ends, Finn, right? Phil Judd. Um, yeah. and this was produced by uh Phil Manzanera. So, wow, yeah, it's a really, really good album. But, um, yeah, folks, check out early split ends, it's kind of nice. proggy as well. It's got a bit of prog, yeah. a bit of uh synth, um, kraut rock, it's got it all. So, that whole um, Finn, Finn Brothers catalog, you could just spend days and weeks i mean it's just genius oh, right there's genius. just so much of it crowded so house tim yeah. finn um schnell fenster there's so many offshoot bands it's um it's a really good vast catalog yeah. um sparks we've got to put uh kimono <laughs> there you go so this is a, an iconic album and the big hit was uh this town ain't big enough um this is the album and uh yeah I think that was perfect for the the makeup show. So there you go, Sparks. Nice. Kimono, my party. house. Yeah, very cool. Awesome. All right, Martin, you're up. Okay, so my first one is uh, New York Dolls. Um, my funny story about this one. I mean, obviously, yeah, a, an iconic, uh, you know, uh, makeup album cover on the back. There's got that cool little shot there. But yeah, my funny story with this is when I first started working in, in Rock Island Tape Center in Trail, BC, um, you know, 14, 15 years old, uh, there was there's all these record bins and 
there were two record bins dedicated to, for some reason, they got in probably about 150 copies of this and the second one. And they were all just sat there forever at $4.99. Then they went down to $2.99. Then they went down to 99 cents and they just slowly, slowly sold. I still, I, my memory is there were still stacks of them. These things are, this would be worth a fortune now, a pile of these, right? Um, but yeah, just, just sitting there. I don't know why they ended up with them and why they didn't send them back. I looked at the second one. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty make up as well, but, uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool because you got Sil Sylvain there in the sort of raggedy Ann look as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Arthur Killer Kane looking really tough. Yeah, that's such a great album cover. Uh, my next one is uh, The Tubes with Young and Rich. Um, so the front is like that, just with the, uh, you know, the, the the fingernail polish. But the back, I thought, yeah. was a really nice makeup job on the band. I love this band shot. I think it's really cool. And with the face shirts like that. But uh, yeah, just a really cool artsy looking uh, band shot on the back cover with uh, with uh, cool use of makeup on them. I, I love the tube, such a great band. Uh, and my third one is uh, I featured these guys before. I remember Flip um, with the whole uh, semi kiss look. And this was a band, uh, ill fated band that was promoted by uh, Bill Ockoin, you know, rock steady management cool band shot on the back there and actually pretty good album but yeah the whole look was just ridiculous it was just re rejected out of hand um they even came back in 2022 with an album called too dumb to quit um but uh, there you go that's my first three so martin i know you've shown that yeah album before but what would you what do they sound i've never heard of i've yeah, never heard I, of I them when you remember it it's pretty heavy alternative stuff okay um yeah, I think what is that? Two thousand two or so. On, I on think that? it's so too. Yeah. Yeah. Well recorded. Bryn Aarons is the is the uh, leader of the band, produced by our uh, Art Art Alex Axis. So I I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, two thousand two. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I don't think that did anything here. Silly looking band. Yeah. yeah. Never heard of it. Yeah. All right. So check let's it out. see what else we got here. Logan Collins, uh, love. Uh, yeah, Alex Harvey band. That's a good choice. Genesis Live's a good choice. Yeah, they're coming in. Transylvanian Hunger. Uh, yeah, so Black Metal is a good choice, obviously, for this. Twisted Sister, more on that later, but I did pick uh, Stay Hungry. Feed Wayville, what a cool name, says Kyle Elzer. Uh, the Cure, uh, yeah, good choice there as well. Uh, Steve Martin, Comedy Ain't Pretty. Nice one, Drew. Excellent, excellent. Uh, yeah, remember that album with the yellow album cover, right? <laughs> Faster Pussycat debut. All right, uh, who's next? Uh, Todd. That would be me. Okay. So somebody's already mentioned this in the comments. I sc scrolled up and tried to find it, but I it was too far up in the mm -hmm. comments. But uh, Adam and the Ants, Prince Charming. Oh, um, love that lots album. Of, lots of makeup in their catalog, but I think this is probably the ultimate one. Uh, yeah. Yep. One of my favorites. S Stephen Piercy's favorite. That's a great album, right? <laughs> it's right. true. When I saw my 80s cruise. He yeah, he loves, loves Adam, Adam the Ants. He loves Adam the Ants. Loves, loves Adam Ant. He took his whole thing from Adam Ant. I wish I liked the first uh, first couple of albums better. I mean, I want to like them. I love the idea that it's early, early Adam and the Ants and the album covers look cool, but I just do not like those early albums. Yeah. This one I love. This is a masterpiece. I feel, same here, but I, I feel like the one before this, about half of it is yeah. getting to this level. And it's then you get to this one and end. it's like, yeah. wow. Um, yeah. My second one is what the first one I thought of, and this is something I remember from doing inventory in my old record store days was uh, Leon, Leon Russell Carney. Hmm. Uh, we always had a copy of that record and uh, it's the one with uh, the song tightrope on it. And I had never listened to it before. I listened to it today. And uh, I think that's kind of a classic uh, uh, makeup cover. It, it's just always one that I, think of when i think of covers with makeup on them it and used then to my be, todd it used to be one of those records you'd always find in the dollar bins like it's yes. singing dog you'd always or i mean use kids jamie can back me up this was always yeah. in the uh, cheap they all bins. were man that's an artist i just never could get into i never me, could get into neither. it either <laughs> that's why it's in the dollar bin <laughs> right <laughs> yeah anyway. but my my third one is uh I'm going to talk about my favorite band, IQ, The Wake. Oh, yeah. And uh, this one is, I think, this is an illustration, but I think, I mean, it looks sort of like Peter Nichols, the lead singer of IQ. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's somebody younger than that. I'm not really sure. But uh, this is a really cool cover. Looks and, like uh, Skyhook. And then, and then if you look at the back, there's some makeup going on there, too. So. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Makeup and mullets. 
Yeah. Makeup <laughs> and mullets. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Cool. All right. I, I guess you're I'm up. up for God's yep. sakes. Okay. You are. I'm not even keeping track. Well, someone mentioned Alex Harvey. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. The sensational Alex Harvey band, the Penthouse Tapes, 1976. I don't know if this was a comp or what, but I'm having a brain block. Who's the guy that always wears the Zal Zal Clemenson. And, Clemenson. and again, it's a little Raggedy Annie looking, right? And oh, yeah. Or oh, rad, Raggedy Annie. Yeah. I think okay. Zal still wears the makeup in whatever I band he's yeah. in now. Uh, yep. I mean, if you're doing it, you might as well do it. Yep. And then this one, I thought I'd throw up and I, I was just kind of perusing and I went, Oh my God, this totally fits. Jethro tall. This was yes. not only do they have wigs and all kinds of stuff, but they are heavily made up to yeah. look old or whatever, or yeah. it's such a bizarre album cover, yeah. but I thought this is perfect. Jethro Tull, this was 1968. And forever and a day, we always thought Jethro Tull would just was super old, right? The guy in the front right. of Aqualung and everything, and just Ian Anderson, the way they dressed, right? They just always seemed like old men, eh? But isn't it funny? You know, you're a new band. You This is your first album. This is what cover you're going to go with. Yeah. They're, they were plagued forever, thinking they're old. It's just yeah. weird. Hey, but whatever. Eventually, it worked out. Uh, here's one. And you probably haven't thought about this band forever, but this immediately popped into my head. Doctor and the Medics laughing at the pieces from 1986. Right. One hit wonder. They did what? They did a remake of Spirit in the Sky, right? Is that what it was? And that was big. Man, I hate that song. Oh, no matter who does it. But that was it. Yeah. That was it for Doctor and the Medics. Norman Greenbaum, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. One, what is that one hit like? wonder aren't they grant doctor in the medics what's that one hit wonder one hit wonder yeah. mm. i don't know i don't mind their version of it so much but that's the only thing i remember i agree with martin i think the i don't think it ever really came out on cd either even though this was in the cd era i don't think it ever got a and CD worst really song ever. in the same category as gary glitter rock and roll part two or whatever it's called right <laughs> it's an anthem and then it's Sammy amazing. Hager does Mass Tequila, which sounds exa- exactly like it. Right? Oh, I love oh. Mass Tequila. God. Oh. I love it. Bad All sporting right. anthems. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Another topic. All right, Jamie, we're throwing it over to you. I'm going with an album I don't own, the Edgar Winter Group. They only come out at night. I always right. thought that was great. Really record. Creepy looking. Yeah. I will tell you that I saw him live in 2002 or 2003 at a Wingsing. Where there was a bunch of bands, a QFM. What's that? Yeah, QFM Wingsing. Mm-hmm. There was a bunch of bands. All the bands were playing fifty minutes to like an hour and ten minutes, depending on who oh, you yeah. were. Oh. It was closing with BOC, wow. and oh. before that was Stephen Piercy. Speaking of uh, Stephen Piercy, Adam and then Edgar. before Stephen Piercy was Edgar Winter. Oh. Everyone played for an hour and fifteen minutes, including BOC. He played for two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Wow. He was up there in the 87 degree sun. And me and my buddies who had a nice buzz going on were just sitting in the back, <laughs> losing our buzz. And he's up there noodling and noodling and oh, man. forever. Noodle. And he, he was at the merch table finding stuff. <laughs> and I walked by and I said, You stole my buzz, old man. <laughs> I was mad. <laughs> Wow. Wait, the last wing zing I was at, Jamie, was the one Donnie Iris played. And I think it was just oh. Donnie Iris. So I don't know what you, what year was yours. That must have been later. I don't know. 2002-ish, something like that. Oh, Donnie Iris is here in a, in, a, in a week from this week. I got tickets. I got tickets. Love that guy, I too. Go Love is like the rock, right? Or I'd be yeah. there. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Great stuff, Donnie Iris. Yeah. Great. Those first four albums, wonderful. Yeah. All right. So that's. Your first, okay, you got two more. Yeah, I thought it would be cool to go with an Alice Cooper one, but one where he's putting on makeup ah, okay. before the show. It's a <laughs> paranormal evening with nice. Alice Cooper. And then at the back, there he is at the show. Yeah. And then uh, Scandal, the warrior, bang, bang, where she's dressed uh, like a warrior. I listened to this before we did our show for the first time ever, all the way through, because I only play the warrior, and then I put the damn thing away. So I listened to it all the way through, and then only the young came on, the journey that- song. It's on there, and I was like, "Only the young." I know that came out after this album. Did they do it first? And I read they were Probably. gonna put it on Frontiers Journey, scrapped it, 
sold it to Scandal. They put it out first. And then Journey put it on uh, the Vision Quest soundtrack and then released it as a single in 84. So the first time it was ever released was by Scandal. I learned something. Very nice. Well, I like the Scandal EP. I don't know if I like that record there so much. The EP's good, though. It's, it's a little boring. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's see what people are saying, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we got the Go Go's with uh, Beauty and the Beat, says Greg Steers. We got Drew Rose with, uh, let's see, Kyle Ellsworth, Stank Attack is correct. LOL. We got Sig Sig Sputnik. That's a good one. <laughs> Wasp could be any of several. Absolutely. Yeah. Max Webster, high class and borrowed shoes. You know, that's a funny one, Terry. I've got that framed on the wall and I looked very closely. And the clothes are wacky on it, but uh, but there's not a lot of makeup. I think it's ma basically Carrie Watkinson on there. Uh, Merciful oh. Fate, yeah, there's a good one. So we, we've got somebody who's in between black metal. And, uh, you know, Merciful Fate's a funny one because he's so black metal, but the band is more power metal, prog metal, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. um, Michael Monroe, Sensory Overload, Impaler, If We Had Brains. All right. Uh, am I up? I think uh, I'm up. Uh, no, Peter's up. Peter's up. Okay, well, okay. the next three is exaggerated makeup. German pop singer, if you could call it that, Nina Hagen, ex in ecstasy. Um, Nina Hagen's kind of a performance artist. Whether you like a, her singing or not is whether you like, uh, some people may think it's like scratching a blackboard, but um, I don't mind it. It's very performance, it's very out there, but yeah. Um, I'm looking at that makeup, it kind of looks like a little bit, uh, remember Divine? You know, the, uh, yeah, yeah, on, on, on route. No, I'm to, getting uh, a bit of a vibe on that. <laughs> it yeah. does look like divine on route to Amy Winehouse, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, 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 absolutely perfect. Yeah. yeah, um, Madonna Celebration, the greatest hits album. I just put this up because I kind of like it. It's got that, yeah. um, Andy Warhol feel I again. The makeup's kind of exaggerated, but um, I thought it wasn't a bad album cover. I don't mind it, you know, picking up on the Andy Warhol bit of yeah. pop art. Yeah. And that's her kind of the greatest hits. Um, and completing this suite is the Eurythmic Savage, which was one of her later periods. Um, yeah, I can see a bit of a lineage between this album and Amy Winehouse in, in a way, Martin. But uh, yeah, this is yeah. where uh, the makeup's quite exaggerated. Best Eurythmic album ever. Is it? If it Seriously? Yeah. Speaking of contrarian takes, yes. Well, I don't the... think that's a contrarian take because um, it. It it's actually, got a lot of critical it, acclaim. Yeah. It got critically acclaimed, but commercially it flopped. It didn't yep. really. No hit on there. It wasn't no hit. Like any uh, the I need a man. Albums. No it, missionary that, man that on of, there. That sort of flopped. Yeah. So mm. was yeah. this the last uh, Rhythmics album? I don't know. I'm asking. No. no. There was more. They've had, they've had about two or three more, haven't they, Todd? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. And they had a comeback album, didn't they? Yeah, and they, they switched labels after this from uh, RCA. RCA. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. Okay, I guess I knew there were more. Couldn't yeah. remember. All right, super. All right, awesome. That was great. All right, let's throw it over to uh, Martin. You're up. Okay, so next I'm going with uh, Peter Gabriel Plays Live. It's kind of one of the first ones I thought of. Pretty weird look for him. Doesn't quite match, uh, you know, I, he's probably got some makeup on in the back there too. But uh, yeah, great era of the band. This is him at the, uh, the height of his thing. Buddy mine, I think it was Charlie Nealon that mentioned this. But are, are, is this common knowledge? But he, he said, you know, the, the records in a row read, sew us up. You know, like sew us up, S-E-W, sew us up, right? Did you notice that? We got so uh, us and up. Oh. I did not. Yeah. I did not know. Was that, that planned? I don't yeah. know. Uh, anyways, Ooh. plays live is definitely. Yeah, and we know in in Genesis he played around with uh, with all this as well. Um, then I've got uh, David Bowie, uh, Scary Monsters, which uh, of course is my uh, my favorite Bowie album. Um, and uh, again, we got the Poirot, Piro, however you say it, kind of kind of look there, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, carried over into some of the other things he did with this, but uh, absolutely amazing album. Uh, you know, at, at this point, he was uh, he was def. Well, actually, this is probably uh, three three four albums into him truly being a a fashion plate uh, with a lot of, with a lot of cool, uh, cool looks, but, uh, definitely an awesome one there. And then I went with the, uh, the Bowie wannabe, the, uh, legendary Joe Bryath with the whole, uh, you know, uh, 
out, outwardly gay artist shtick that, uh, and then they spent a lot of money on the whole thing and on the promotion. I remember all the ads. I think he did. So the first album, I think there was a first album and a second album, right? There's three. I three. think. Really? I think I, so. I thought maybe there's one and even one unreleased or whatever. The but, one oh, yeah, that I'm showing is the first one. That's right. So we got, I think that's the picture of the, of the two albums right there. I think it's two albums. Unless I don't know. Third, is that a third album? Anyways, uh, this was just a legendary business story where a lot of money was poured into this. And it was kind of like he was going to be the next Bowie and whatnot. And I think in the, the, the booklet of this reissue, this reissue is really good. There's like liner notes and everything. And But yeah, he always had that sort of, uh, you know, quintessential uh, late 70s gay look sort of thing where it's a, a more of a strictly effeminate thing going on there, right? Is that the uh, the comp that Morrissey does the liners for? Yes, I think okay. it is Morrissey doing this. Um, and he got involved also with the New York Dolls reunion, didn't he? I think Morrissey executive that produced too. that too. Oh, I think maybe. he was the one bringing that out. Actually, let's see. Liner notes, Robert Cochran from a, a biography of Joe, Bar Joe Bryant. That's pretty cool. Let's see. Is there another set of liner notes in here? Oh, yeah. Morrissey. Yeah. March 2004. So he does yeah. the opening uh, to two panel essay uh, to this. Um, so that is my third one. Let's go over to the comments quickly. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Nancy Sinatra, the Smiths. Uh, let's see. Typo negative bloody kisses. Yeah, that's a good makeup one. Marillion, great choice. T-Rex is a great choice. Yeah, a lot of them here, eh? Uh, and a lot of this is linked to the whole, uh, obviously the whole glam scene, Ozzy Bark at the Moon. Yeah, that was a famously, that was a heck of a lot of work putting that uh, <laughs> That whole costume together. I he do. I like do, crazy. Marlon. All about that. Grant knows this gay artist. Yeah. I do. I'm whole surfers, locust abortion technician. Strange days. That's a good one. Culture club. All right. Over to is it Todd's turn? It is. It is. Yep. Yes, Todd. it is. Yep. Okay. Everything's yep. out of order today. And I know. I know. I don't know what's up. going on because you're not going in order. So yeah. yeah. All right, Todd, you're up. All right. Well, my next one is uh Missing Person Spring Session M. And yes. you know, after I picked this, I thought when I was thinking about it in my head, I was like, oh, she's got that blue streak on her face. Well, it's really just kind of, you know, superimposed over it, but she does have a lot of makeup on. Yeah. And then if you look at the back, everybody's got a lot of makeup on. So, yeah. <laughs> one of well my done, favorite, Todd. I think one of, my, <laughs> one of my favorite albums of the 80s is that record. I oh, think yeah, that's a good. perfect record. Check yeah. out the show we did on Rock Day Dream Nation. There you go. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Nice, but that's a great record. And then my next one is uh Elvis Costello Spike. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, there we go. I always oh, thought that was a shadow. There, there we go. Hold that up there again. There, I oh, keep yeah. thinking that's insane, insane clown posse, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, we could have used them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think this is a uh, 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 uh. I think this is a really great album cover. It's really crazy. When I saw it for the first time, I was shocked. I was like, yeah. wow, that's really, I don't know what to make of that. But I love that record. <laughs> it's yeah. memorable. Good album. At least. Yeah. And then, of course, somebody's already mentioned this. Uh, Daryl Hall and John Oates from oh, 1975. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. This came out in 1975. I was 11 years old, and I had already seen Bowie and guys that wore makeup. So when I saw this, it didn't even phase me. But there are lots of people who see this for the first time and just freak out and go, oh, my God, look how much makeup they have on. I'm just like, eh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've kind of been there, done that. Right. Yeah. It's a bit of an outrider for them, isn't it, to go that direction? Yes. I yes. don't know I why they decision did that. that was. Yeah. I don't know whose decision. They just went, oh, here, we're going to do this. And OK, I guess they go one Pleasant away. album, but not, you know, not super flamboyant or no. out there yeah. or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was All that, right, uh, that three? was three. All mm -hmm. right. Okay, Grant, so, uh, you're up for your last four, I guess. I'm up for my last four. Okay, here we go. My number seven, I went with Susie and the Band. She's a Kiss in the Dream House, 1982. Nice. If you could see the image, of course, Susie's all made up. She's always, always made up. Yep. She always looks great. And I do believe that the band, if we could see it, you'll have to go out and search it on your own. They have makeup too. Everybody was wearing makeup during this era. Yep. Speaking of this era, we're going to go with my next one, Massage, Beat Boy 1984, oh, yeah. which, come on. I mean, this is. Basically well, this looks is, like Susie. It looks like yeah. Susie, for God's yeah. sake. So uh, what can I the, say? The great uh, state strange. Yeah. Rest yeah. in peace. But this is a good record. I think this originally came out like on a uh, cassette. Then uh, it came out on vinyl. And then it came out on CD. 
All right, my next one is a band that's going to be playing here in Central Ohio soon. Kraftwerk, The Man Machine, 1978. Uh, Great very album influential. Cover. Yeah, I'm going to get tickets for that. Going to go. I've never seen them. I'm going to go see them. Uh, we've got Lipstick. Well, they're all made up. They all look the same. But what a cool album cover, you have to admit. Um, and my number 10, I think, it's just a hideous album cover. You might as well end on a horrible album cover. And Madame X, we reserve the right, 1984. <laughs> yeah. Not only do they look hideous, but their makeup is hideous. Yeah. I bought this album on the basis of the album cover. Is that a true story? It was just sort of one of those, oh, I've got to buy this. Yeah. <laughs> is, does right. the music reflect the album? I've never Oh, it's it. sort of like B grade Motley Crue. You know, okay. I think it's got one of the chick. It's got one of the chicks from um, Vixen. Vixen, Roxy, yeah. Roxy's yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Is and, that the um, same band that Sebastian Bach was in? Yes, yeah. yes. He briefly had a sojourn in this band, but um, yeah, it's out there. But the image does not match the music. It, you guys, the heard image the is much more outrageous than the music. Have you guys heard the new Sebastian Bach song that's coming out? This album will be out in May. Oh, no, not bad. I like Sebastian Bach. Cool. I have to say, love him. Well, I think Skid Row are up for another singer now. They've lost their last singer. Yeah. So maybe it may happen finally. Yeah. You well, know. he said on the cruise, he said, you know what? If I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. But he wants it them. more than they do. But anyway, we'll see yeah. how. Well, he'd yeah. be great. If they wanted yeah. to sell tickets, for God's sakes, put him back in there. 100%. 100%. Yes. Oh, yeah. well. It's another thing. All right. Let's see. what What's happening in the comments? Well, let's see. We've got a mention for Dirty Work from Logan. Uh, Madam X is out. Rolling Stone. Some Girls is mentioned. Sensational Alex Harvey Band. Pentos tapes. Saw Kraftwerk two years ago. So Steve Polari. Kate, uh, Kate Bush Dreaming. Yeah, that's a good one. Chrome that's Destiny. a good one. That's, uh, yeah, I, I love that album. Cover. Great, great cover. Al Jolson started it all. So uh, <laughs> Al Jolson. Yeah, Al Abath, Jolson. Abath. Great one. Dead or Alive is a great choice. Yeah. Uh, Final Tap. The Sun Never Sweats. Uh, Cambonian Motto. Uh, let's see. Um, all right, over to right. whoever's next. That would be Jamie. Jamie, you're up. Uh -oh. yeah, just in his work on my buff. There we go. Shoes. There you are. <laughs> Do you want want me to skip? Or are you buffering good? issue, man? No, all right. you seem okay. Um, go for he it. He was Jamie. buffering last well, night, but then it, qu it stopped. Then he yeah, you, you've been glitching a little today, but yeah. all right. All right. Um, Okay. Yeah, I know, right. I know, I can tell. Um, this is one of those things where you kind of remember where you were when you, you remember where you were when John Lennon died, you remember where you were, mm -hmm. maybe when Michael Jackson died, you remember where you were the first time you saw Boy George. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I do remember when I first saw, Boy I remember George. the first time I saw him, it was on, it was, I think, solid gold. I saw him on a Sunday night at seven o'clock. You know, I think Saul Gold came on at seven o'clock and I was like, is that a girl? Is that a boy? I don't know. And we all talked about him mm -hmm. at school the next day. So Phenomenal yeah, record though. Phenomenal record. This album cover could have been really goofy. This could have been really goofy, but it somehow works. Diary of a Madman by Ozzy Osbourne. I don't yeah. know. They I set still that think up. it's kind of If it's, I would have been there when they were Goofy and it paper, works. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> Yeah, I would have been like, "This is going to turn out bad." <laughs> yeah, it's goofy and it works. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, you which, know what's not goofy and works out of uh, out of the wow. three that is so not title. goofy. Oh, he, 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 hear me. <laughs> he is buffering so bad that there's a space time continuum yeah, problem going on. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Go ahead. I'm going to have to use my data maybe on my phone. No, wasp. Yeah. Goofy, oh, yeah. just like the Ozzy Osbourne one, but works. Classic album, it still works. Yeah. And then the one kiss one. It's <laughs> yes. kind of a cartoon drawing, but it's insinuated that they have lipstick on. So I remember seeing this and thinking, "Can you take off the makeup and put the makeup back on?" If that makes sense. <laughs> yes. So, yes, yeah. Kiss Asylum. And that's very Andy Warhol too, right? Yes. It's kind yeah, of like yeah, a glam answer to Dynasty, isn't it? Yeah. Album cover in a way. Kind of. 
You know what I was trying to mention there of those first three Aussie albums, the, the one that's not goofy and really works is, is the one where he's in the attic holding up the cross, right? That, that's like, scary. Take off all the crappy makeup and, and yeah, he's just like dressed perfectly. Like that's a great, great shot, right? Yeah, he did yeah. have some good ones. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, Peter, you're up. Your last four. All righty. Um, if you're going to talk about a glam rock musical, you've got to have the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Bit of makeup on there. So there you go, Frank and Furter. Yeah. That was the perennial late night movie in Australia in every capital city playing for like 30 years, people getting dressed up and having a lot of fun. It's a fun movie, but there you go. Rocky Horror Picture yeah. Show. Um, Next one, Lou Reed, Rock and Roll Animal. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's going the real sort of uh goth heavy makeup on that one that's a monster of an um an album but, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah like that is, one a lot is that, is that the birth of goth uh when it comes to makeup there's probably a whole I, history. I think I it's know. right up there martin yeah when you be. look at it because yeah. that Very is definitely image. goth yeah i mean he was hanging with pop he was hanging with bowie and i think there was a lot of cross pollinization of ideas and uh he was definitely bringing a lot more uh androgyny to his performances and uh this era you know you can see you know he's using the makeup and the lippy so he's getting full is on it, into is it. it bebop deluxe in that classic picture of them it's pretty goth looking right is it on axe yep. victim the back of axe victim maybe yeah yep. that's looking pretty goth yeah, yeah that'd be a good example too but man what a great album cover and steve hunter and dick wagner's guitar interplay on this record god they were like a dynamo team so and good. if you look at the photo, it's slightly out of focus. So it's a little bit yeah. disconcerting to the, you know, the person yeah. that's looking at it. it and that makes it even more effective. It's like there's movement. He's yeah. moving. Oh, it's per it's I think great. it's a uh, it's a great out. I think it's one of his best album covers. I think it's up there. Oh, I mean oh, Transformer, man. I could have put, put put that in because that's kind of like makeup but yeah. um sort of yeah. processed. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Lou, Lou's the man. All right, I'll finish off with a couple of uh, glammy hair metal type albums. One's a parody and one's not. Um, we'll go with Tough, Stevie Rochelle. Hello, oh, yeah. Stevie. Uh, metal Sludge website. <clears throat> uh, look, that's just what was happening in 1990, 1991 in the hair metal scene in LA. Um, just full on bandanas, glam, makeup, bit of poison, bit of Brett Michaels. Um, <laughs> leave it speaks for itself it speaks yeah. for itself <laughs> and then this is the parody um bad news right. self-titled so yeah. this was a group of comedians who did a show called the young ones in the uk oh, so yeah. our uk viewers would know about this uh, uh rick mail adrian edmondson and all these other uh, sort of comedians it was like a a british version of spinal tap uh called the comic strip and they did the travails of this uh, heavy metal band bumbling around UK and actually played Castle Donington, Martin. And um, <laughs> I, I think they got uh, bottles thrown at them. They were just below the bill, below Saxon. Yeah. And they could actually play their instruments, but they, they got absolutely slammed by the audience. Yeah. <laughs> People funny. were throwing poo and yeah bottles. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. bad news. Well, how is this album, though? Is it... Oh, it's just parody rock. Yeah. <laughs> Comedy. Neat. Yeah. Neat. Well, never heard All of right. it. All right. Um, let's look at the comments here. We've got uh, Pete on the front cover of It's Hard. Yeah, I'm going to have some Who in a sec. We've got some more Who here from Chrome Destiny. Keep Moon on the back cover of the Who yep. Sellout. Um, let's see. Uh, Bill Nelson, most underrated guitarist. Any Roy Wood cover? Yeah, I, I went and looked for some. I didn't. I didn't have uh, one with uh, a good one with him. But that's a that's a great choice. Um, all right. Oh, Dave Dave Vanian. Yeah, there you go. That's kind of early goth too, right? But it's not as early as Lou Reed, of course. But uh, uh, am I up, Grant? You are. I oh. am. Okay. So, Twisted Sister, um, the uh, the rock and debut, the amazing debut. Um, obviously they look a little more serious and cool on the back, but, uh, yeah, D with his, whatever happened to baby Jane kind of ridiculous look and the rest of the guys with their ridiculous glam look. There's, there's JJ. I've never liked anything about this look, uh, <laughs> had, but, uh, great, great rock and rock in the album. 
great production on there as well. Uh, my next one is the Who Face Dances. Bit of a left turn here. This is more like makeup in paintings. Um, and then, of course, it's got the uh, the big poster. I won't, I won't pull it out and un unload it. But, uh, yeah, so everybody's kind of more like literally got their faces painted on this and some makeup and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, and, and even on all the best cowboys have Chinese eyes, he looks like he's definitely kind of made up or, or airbrushed mm -hmm. at least, right? Yeah. Um, next, we've got uh, Japan with obscure alternatives, um, looking like a hair metal band, looking like Hanoi Rocks, sounding like neither. Um, but, uh, there we go. The great David Sylvian there and, uh, yeah, looking like Mike Monroe. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is a band, uh, you know, I, I should spend some more time and try to get more into them, but I, I basically, well, I remember as a kid buying these thinking they were going to be pretty heavy. And of course they weren't. So it was always disappointment, but, uh, got to meet them and see a concert. That was really cool. One of the greatest concerts I ever saw. Um, and then finally, uh, heart with the classic, uh, you know, everybody all overblown heart, heart look, you know, the gals all made up, but the guys too. And the ridiculous, uh, you know, the, the, the clothes made up by some designer kind of dude, but there's your, there's your hair metal pop look little, little half Pat Benatar, half tough, I guess. Um, so that's my last uh, four. Let's see. Uh, well, let's turn it over to who are, whoever. Todd. Todd? Todd's up. Okay. So my next two, I included these because when I was having trouble thinking of my last two, I was Googling and looking for things, for ideas on the internet. And these two kept coming up. And now, of course, I see everybody's uh, uh, suggestions uh, in the comments. And I think, man, why didn't I think of uh, Marillion Brave or mm -hmm. any of those Marillions? But anyway, um, the first one is uh, Lady Gaga, Born This Way. And uh, good, you picked the, that's the alternative. Well, there's cover. like five or six different that's, covers. I figured that would be the best one. That's the best one because it shows her makeup the best. Um, <laughs> the one where she's on the motorcycle, it's, she's a little bit further away. Mm -hmm. And then um, this one kept coming up every time I was searching for, and you know, it was funny. I was searching for Insane Clown Posse because <laughs> I thought, oh, well, that's a for sure. But all of their album covers are illustrations. They're not oh, like yeah. people in makeup. They're like drawings and graphics and yeah. stuff like that. And so anyway, I picked this one, Gary Lewis and the Playboys. Everybody loves a clown from, uh, it says 2011 there, but it's from 1965. Oh, sorry. That would be a typo, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but uh, really poppy stuff. It sounds like early Beatles. Uh, not quite as interesting as early Beatles, but uh, the third of three charting records for those guys. And fun mm -hmm. fact, they did a cover on this album of Tossin' and Turnin', just like our friend Peter Chris. Hmm. Wow. My goodness. And, uh, Peter Chris's version is better. You but, know what? Uh, you know what? You would think this is the wow. first Gary Lewis and the Playboys album. You would think you'd go with something a little bit. It, it's the third, actually. Is that the third? But it's one of the early ones. Yeah. I get it. That was back when they used to make an album every six months. Tells you I don't know my Gary Lewis and the Playboys. <laughs> I well, you also Lewis. unearthed the the number one winner for worst bit makeup album cover, and that would be Peter Chris. Chris Cat number one or whatever. Yes. Yes. Right? Todd, I get a Jerry Lewis vibe on that album cover. I don't know why. Yeah, I do too. It's it's, it's Jerry it's, Lewis it's, the uh, comedian. It's well, it's it's unsettling. But anyway, yes. moving on to uh Human League Dare. Uh and uh there I saw an alternative image too. There's an alternative image that has the the pictures of all of the band members mm -hmm. like in different squares, and they've all they're all Made I saw like them that. two weeks ago, Todd. They were brilliant. Did you? Oh, Played that's the whole great. album from start to finish. Really? Dude. Absolutely. <laughs> Very nice. Wow. That's fantastic. That's so mm -hmm. cool. And then uh, my last one is uh, Fall Out Boy, American Beauty, American Psycho. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I have never heard Fall Out Boy. And so I listened to this today. And it's like if you took whatever machine they crank Imagine Dragons through, <laughs> crank it through like six or seven more times. And it sounds like a Fall Out Boy. Now, you know the Parish of Rock loves Fall Out Boy. <laughs> oh, yeah? It's pretty interesting stuff, it I got to say. But uh, it is definitely... Uh, Diluted wow. Blink-182 is what I always thought. So would yeah. you say yeah. that yeah. Imagine Dragons is better? This is watered down Imagine Dragons, watered down Blink-182? I, I don't know if I would... I don't know if I would make that. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's just really over the top. It's really noisy. How you water down water. 
it's, it's how do really you water down water. All three of those band names, uh, fall out boy without an ash rock, imagine yes. dragons, a short sentence, and blink 182. Like, yeah, oh, all three, <laughs> it's douche rock, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. That's all I got. All right, cool. Boy, we've got some. We might as well look at the comments real quick. Well, I, I, I'll rattle know. off a few uh, honorable mentions here. Oh, we, we'll um, do that by all means. E EZO, remember the Japanese uh, kind of a uh, Kiss-like band? Uh, they they had they had the makeup and the big hair and stuff. And that was a really good album. Debbie Harry Cuckoo, right? I think that's a real that's a really one. made up one, right? Whole lived through this with the running mascara. Uh, the Randy Newman, no one picked the Randy Newman where he's dressed up with the Kiss makeup, right? Sitting at his desk, I think it is. Warriors, do you remember that uh, that Warriors band? The um, I think they were a Yugoslavian heavy metal, but they they went with the makeup. Um, Hello, people! Right, uh, that's the that's the band, right? The old the old crappy seventies band, right? Yeah. Todd Rundgren produced that. Crimson Glory with Midnight, and then uh, a million black metal bands. So there you yep. go. And there's somebody mentioned Marillion Brave. That's a great one. I don't know why how I that's missed a good that cover. One, but, yeah. Yep. Cool. And I've got one oh, here, Tony Marilyn Valuable. Manson. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, oh, I thought of you. him after I made my list. Good one. We've got Ken White hey, mentioning Tony Lee Basil. Ford. She always looks great. What's that? Guess. What'd you say, Jamie? Tony Basil. Oh, okay. that would be that would. You always have a lot of makeup on. Yes, drama inner sleeve. Um, Steve Howe's eyes. D dressed up as Tar Tarzan in drag. <laughs> uh, Klaus Nomi or Gary Newman? Yeah, we had Klaus Nomi. Gary Newman's another yeah. good one. Stooges Raw Power is a great choice, Steve. That's a good. Uh, that's that's an excellent one. Yeah, that's kind of the Lou Reed look a little bit, right? But a little more gold than black. I suppose. <laughs> Ken White, where's Pete? I'm sure he has quite a few winners. We need oh, to yeah. get Pete back on here on a Wednesday. All right, very heavy, very Yeah, there we go. All, All right. right, yeah, good, good right, one, good one. Go. Go. All right, everybody, I guess Wrap we're up. done. We're wrapping Wrap this up. dog up. I want to thank everybody in the chat for uh, tuning in tonight. It's a lot of fun. We couldn't do it without you. You know, and like we always say, we're only, only trying to turn you on to this stuff. And hopefully you'll reach out and check out some of these records. But uh, based on that, nice seeing everybody. We will be back next week. I'm not sure what our topic will be, but we will come up with something. So Absolutely. tune back here next week, 7 p.m. Eastern. I guess we're in daylight time here. Mm -hmm. Eastern daylight time. And we will do it again. All right, everybody. We'll see you. Have a good one. All week. right. See you, folks. Bye.